You're listening to a message from Gateway Church Geelong. We hope it blesses you. For more information about Gateway, visit gc.org.au. Well, I'm excited to get around the Word today um, and you know, just share what God's put on my heart um, for you and for us as a church. Um, but who knows that when you have a desire for something, um, you're likely to put things in place to make sure it happens. You know, if anyone's gone through the process before of buying a house, you probably had to put some things into place to be able to save for a deposit. Um, maybe you had to give up on eating out so much or maybe not having as much ice cream. Um, you know, we have to put things into place um, to outwork the desires that we had. Um, and one for me this morning, maybe for the parents in the room from when I was a young child, is that we were given $2 a week pocket money. And that meant that after the tithe, we had $1.80 to spend every week. Now, we had this rule in our house. It was that we didn't eat McDonald's too often. But if Dad had to go away from work, we got McDonald's. Amen? Amen. Well, this one time, um, we got our McDonald's and, you know, I ate mine extremely quickly, as you do, because you're hungry when you're a growing young lad. Um, and my sister, she was small and, you know, she didn't really eat all of hers. So she had half of a milkshake left. Now, I had a great desire to finish the rest of her milkshake. And one thing about my sister that I learned that day is that she is a master negotiator. <laughs> because she charged me... I think it was $4 for her half empty milkshake. And, you know, my desire for that milkshake was so strong that I would have, you know, I would have moved the mountains to make that happen. So um, I lost $4 that day for a lukewarm half empty milkshake. It, no, it wasn't worth it. No. But today, uh, you know, I want to share about desire and the title of my message is the heart of a disciple. You know, we'll explore what it means to be a, dis- a disciple and not just in our actions, but in heart and our motivation. You know, what, what does disciple mean? Um, you know, the dictionary defines it as one who receives instruction from another, a scholar, a learner, or especially a follower who has learned to believe in the truth of the doctrine of his teacher. So the key to discipleship is who is being followed. You know, discipleship is about who is being followed. You know, you can be a disciple of many things. You, know, you can be a disciple of an ideology. You can be a disciple of a person. Maybe it's your favorite columnist in the Sunday paper. Maybe it's a structure. You know, there's things that are competing for our attention in our day-to-day lives that want us to desire to follow them trying to get us to follow but in the bible in john 14 verse 6 it says jesus told him i am the way the truth and the life no one can come to the father except through me you know it's my desire that as a disciple of jesus that it's jesus that i am following you know jesus who is the way the truth and the life you know i don't want to believe the truth of anything except for Jesus. You know, a truth that lasts, that remains faithful and that always points us in the right direction. You know, and if we look at Luke chapter 9, verse 23, Jesus says to the crowd, if any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way, take up your cross daily and follow me. You know, this is the invitation that Jesus has for all of us. You know, to walk in the way that Jesus offers us. You know, this scripture, it says, if any of you. You know, this is something that is offered to all of us. You know, regardless of where we've come from, who we are, Jesus offers this to us, that we can give up our own way and follow him. So what is discipleship? Well, I can tell you what discipleship isn't. It's not a course. You know, it's not a a four-week course, and you become a disciple of Jesus. You know, discipleship isn't even necessarily about what it is that we do, but discipleship is about who we follow. 
You know, it's giving up our own way for a better way, for the best way, and following Jesus. You know, the heart of a disciple has a revelation that God's way is the way. Because discipleship is so much more than just learning about what to do to how to conduct ourselves. But it's about following Jesus and growing in our relationship with our living Savior and walking out a life that is in close step with Him, being directed, empowered, and guided by Him. Because in discipleship, relationship comes first. You know, discipleship is relationship first. Learning to know Jesus, to understand Him. You know, the more that we learn to know Jesus, who we're following, the more we imitate Him and become like Him. And we catch the heart of what He values. You know, we catch His very heart. And then we desire what He desires. And we exemplify that heart to the world around us. So the heart of a desire, a disciple, it desires to be close to Jesus. You know, Mark chapter 12 from verse 29 says, Jesus replied, the most important commandment is this. Listen, O Israel, the Lord our God is the one and only Lord. And you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind and all your strength. And the second commandment is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. No other commandment is greater than these. So we see a couple of things here. The first is that Jesus says the Lord our God is the one and only Lord. Now, so a question for us today is, who is it that we are following? You know, I think the fact that it says that the Lord our God is the one and only Lord means that potentially we can be following more than one thing as well. Now, maybe we follow Jesus' way sometimes, but then another way other times. You know, maybe we're following ourselves and our own desires, but we're encouraged to give up our own way for the best way, that is God's. You know, to truly live out a life as a disciple, we can't have one foot in and one foot out. You know, it's not the, it's not the hokey pokey. You know, the Lord our God is the one and only Lord. And then Jesus continues to say, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and with all your strength. You know, I think this speaks about how we're following Jesus. You know, not just in our heart, not just in our mind, but that we would love God with our whole selves, with our entire intellect, with our actions, with every part of us. You know, it's my desire for God. Is it, is it from my heart? Is it from my soul? Is it from my mind? Is it from my strength? Or is it from all of those things together? You know, is it all mind, but not in my heart? I don't have an inner desire for it. You know, do I believe it in my heart, but I don't outwork it with my strength? You know, we're encouraged to love God with every part of ourselves. You know, this is the heart of a disciple. You know, and the next thing Jesus says is to love your neighbor as yourself. This is the outworking of a disciple. You know, to love your neighbor as yourself. You know, and this starts with loving ourselves the way that God intended us to. You know, to see yourself the way that God sees you and to see others the way that God sees them as well. Because discipleship and following Jesus gives us us an understanding of Jesus' heart for us, for all of humanity, for the church, and it moves us to exemplify it. You know, and at the end of this passage as well, Jesus says, no other commandment is greater than these. You know, I believe that's because they make way for the rest. You know, when these two lock into place, you know, the ways of Jesus flow out of us. You know, when we, our love for God is at the foremost and our love for others follows, it motivates us to outwork of, out of His goodness, out of His heart, God's heart. You know, Luke chapter 6 verse 45 says, A good person 
produces good things from the treasury of a good heart. You know, what you say flows from what is in your heart. You know, we need to have a constant revelation of Jesus' heart. His heart for us as individuals. His heart for those around us. His heart for the church that we're a part of. His heart for all people. Now, because this revelation, this understanding, when we catch a glimpse of God's heart, you know, it brings desire inside of us. You know, it gives us a desire to see God's kingdom come in our families, to see God's kingdom come in our own lives. You know, when we see the church, when we catch a, a glimpse of God's heart for the church, you know, our desire to see the church in all of its beauty flows out from what is inside of us. You know, when we have an understanding of this, our hearts are moved. You know, in John chapter 14 from verse 23, it says, Jesus replied, Anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Anyone who does not love me will not obey my teaching. These words you hear are not my own. They belong to the Father who sent me. You know, discipleship starts with loving God. It starts with relationship with Jesus and following Him. Because loving Jesus and following Him go hand in hand. And then our actions follow. You know, our love for and our devotion to Jesus, it motivates us to obedience. You know, that passage said, anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. You know, when we learn to understand God's heart, our actions, they follow. You know, as we draw close to God, He brings us understanding as we learn His heart and then goodness flows out from it. You know, if I have a revelation of how God has created me, of who God's created me, how does that change how I treat myself? How does that change how I see myself? You know, in drawing close to God, He speaks to me about who I am, who He's created me to be, and it changes the way I see myself. Now, as I draw close to God, I, I catch a glimpse of how He's created others, and it changes the way that I see them. You know, I see people the way that God has. You know, I believe the best in people. I encourage them in who God's created them to be. You know, as I draw close to Jesus, I see the church the way that God has created it to be. You know, it changes the way I serve others, changes the way I serve God, that I see the church in all of its beauty, in all of its richness, in its unity, because of the desire that God has put in my heart. Because when we have a real desire for God, our actions flow out of it. You know, our motivations are driven by our love for God. You know, the heart of a disciple desires to be spirit-led. You know, we've been given the Holy Spirit through Jesus as our guide. You know, Galatians chapter 5 from verse 16 says, So I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. Then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. The sinful nature wants to do evil, which is just the opposite of what the Spirit wants. And the Spirit gives us desires that are opposite of what the sinful nature desires. You know, following Jesus is a constant process of choosing His way. You know, to lay down our own desires, to turn away from ourselves and turn to His perfect will, His perfect purpose for our lives. You know, that scripture said that as we allow the Holy Spirit to guide us, we're given desires in our heart that are the opposite of our sinful desires, our sinful nature. You know, we can allow the Holy Spirit to guide us, to give us desire, to desire God and the things of God. You know, because we can try our hardest to fight against our own flesh, in our own strength. You know, maybe we can do it for a while. You know, maybe we can work hard and we can strive and we can try to put all the right things in place. And, 
You know, we can do it for a while, but that's not my desire. My desire is to produce good and lasting fruit. And we do that by opening our hearts to the Holy Spirit to guide us and allow Him to give us desire to remain planted and to allow the Holy Spirit to pour desire into our hearts. You know, John chapter 15, verse 4, Jesus says, Remain in me and I will remain in you. For a branch cannot produce fruit if it is severed from the vine, and you cannot be fruitful unless you remain in me. You know, I, I read this quote in a, in a Bible plan this week, and it says there are various types of spiritual temperaments, and it is important that we determine the ways that we best connect with God. Richard Foster once wrote, By themselves, the spiritual disciplines can do nothing. They can only get us to a place where something can be done. It is our hope that as we lean into the rhythms that are pathways to a connection with Christ, we will experience communion and intimacy with Him. You know, it said by themselves, the spiritual disciplines can do nothing. You know, it sounds like a, a bold claim. But what it's not saying is that the spiritual disciplines are unimportant. Because the spiritual disciplines are important. They are vital. But the purpose of them isn't for us to earn our righteousness. The purpose of spiritual disciplines isn't for us to earn God's love or for us to impress Him. But for us to create a space within ourselves for God to do the work in us. You know, they help us to posture ourselves and open our hearts to Him. But let's not make them platitudes. You know, let's not just make them things that we do to tick off a box, that we forget the very reason we do them in the first place. And that is to be close to God, for relationship with God. You know, because we can become so busy doing, so busy striving, so busy working, that we can miss the key that is Jesus. Now, I heard a farmer talking about their crop, and this isn't an agricultural term, but it's the way they described it. They described their crop as a princess crop. And that is that, you know, they've planted it, it's been there for three to four weeks, and the conditions have been perfect. And, you know, it's looking amazing. You know, it's growing strong. The leaves are starting to look luscious. You know, the foliage looks great. Because they've been a farmer for a long time, they know the truth. So they pull one of the plants out and the roots are only about that long. Because the plant hadn't put its roots down to find sustenance. So then when the stress comes, when there's rain, when there's wind, when there's challenge, you know, the roots aren't there, the foundation isn't there. Because the plant spent all its energy making itself look good, but not putting its foundation into where it mattered. You know, I think sometimes we can do the same. We can put all of our work and all of our effort into displaying the right things. And I think not even just for others all the time. Sometimes we do it for ourselves, to make ourselves feel good, to try to justify ourselves with God. But then when, the, when things get tough and we don't feel good anymore, we find that there's no roots, that we don't have a solid foundation to find sustenance from God. You know, that encouragement to remain in Him, remain planted in Him. You know, we need to dig deep foundations into God. We need to deep, dig deep foundations into His Word. You know, nobody else can do this for you. You know, we can sit in church for our whole lives. We can listen to any number of sermons. We can listen to any number of songs. But if we haven't opened our hearts to God, then we don't have that foundation. You know, it's time for us to find our desire for Him. It's time for us to find our passion for Him. To relight our desire for God and to know Him wholly. Because our living God, He desires to know us personally. You know, can we turn our eyes to Him, take a step toward Him 
with desire, with longing to know him, to know him more. And my encouragement to us today is don't try to follow the way without knowing the way maker. You know, don't try to follow the way without knowing the way maker. You know, Jesus, he made the way for us. But the way to that is by knowing him. You know, my encouragement is to live a first-hand life with Jesus. You know, Jesus is personal. He's personable. Our relationship with God is for us as individuals, for us to find our own revelation, to find our own understanding. You know, not just living off what others have told us about God, but to really know Him for ourselves, to take the time to dig deep into Him and find an inner desire for the things of God. And then goodness flows out of it. Because we're not following the ways of a Jesus that we've just heard about, that we've just read about, but we're following the ways of a Jesus who we know, who we can know personally, who we can draw near to and can come to fullness of relationship with. Because the heart of a disciple is after God's own heart. Now Luke 6 verse 40 says, Students are not greater than their teacher, but the student who is fully trained will become like the teacher. You know, is that your heart this morning? That we would become like Jesus? To carry the same values, to carry the same grace, to carry the empowerment of God. You know, we can never become greater than Jesus because He is God. But we can become like Him in the fruit that we carry and the goodness that flows out of us. You know, we know the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And I don't know if you're like me and you've found yourself sometimes like, oh, I've got a little bit, uh, I've got a lot of love, I've got a lot of joy, I've got a lot of peace, but forbearance and self-control, not so much. You know, the fruit of the Spirit aren't things we're meant to look at individually. You know, the fruit of the Spirit is the goodness of God that flows from our heart when we're close to Him. You know, they're, it's a package. They're not individual things, it's a package. When our heart is close to God, when we have a desire for Him, all these things flow out from it. So what is the desire of my heart? What is the desire of your heart today? For me, it's to lay down my own way to pursue God and to become more like Him. You know, Psalm 42, verse 1 to 2. You know, let's look at the passion with how David pursues God. It says, As the deer longs for streams of water, so I long for you, O God. I thirst for God, the living God. You know, where can I go and stand before him? You know, here we see that David longs for God. His heart longs for God to know him personally. Now that speaks of such a desire in his heart. You know, David wasn't perfect by any means, but he had a desire for God. You know, not for God's ordinances. You know, not for the spiritual disciplines, but for God himself. You know, not to be just a good person, but to know God and allow goodness to flow from the heart. You know, Psalm 28 verse 7 says, The Lord is my strength and shield. I trust Him with all my heart. He helps me and my heart is filled with joy. I burst out in songs of thanksgiving. You know what? A picture of passion for God. You know, we're called to be a passionate people. And we're called to be a people with desire. Pursuing a living God who desires to dwell with us. You know, again in Luke 9.23, it says, Then he said to the crowd, If any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way, take up your cross daily, and follow me. You know, that's the call for us today, is to give up our own way, take up our cross, and follow me. 
You know, I think the, the understanding of this scripture has kind of been clouded by the statement, that's just my cross to bear. But that's not what this is about. You know, we're not called to carry those things. We're called to turn to God, to lay down our everything and pick up the cross that is His grace and walk with Him by our side in His ways, surrendering to God and making a wholehearted commitment with our everything to follow me. So for all of us today, you know, what is it that we need to surrender to Him? What is it that we need to lay down for him? Because the Bible says that in our weaknesses, he is made strong. You know, God wants to strengthen us in our weaknesses. Because our fallback can be to try to work harder, to compensate. But when we grow closer to God, despite our flaws, despite our weaknesses, we allow him to make us perfect in spite of them. Because his desire is for us to be strengthened, not by our striving, not by our working, not by our trying, but by his spirit and his goodness. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9 says, Each time he said, my grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. So now I am glad to boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ can work through me. That's why I take pleasure in my weaknesses and in the insults, hardships, persecutions. For when I am weak, then I am strong. You know, what is our heart today? You know, what is the desire of our heart today? And can we just take a moment to to close our eyes just to focus on what God wants to do in this moment. I I really felt this week that as I was preparing, that there's people here who you've been trying really hard to live a good life. You've been trying really hard to impress God. Maybe you feel like you need to earn His love. But God wants to tell you today that we don't need to impress Him but that we should desire to earnestly know Him. You know, God's heart for us is that we would really know Him. You know, that song we sang earlier, it said, it's never been about deserving or earning. You know, it's a gift that's freely given. You know, all God wants is your heart, your heart for him, you to desire Him. And 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9, it says, my grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. In weakness. So if you're here today and you know, you know God, but you've been trying really hard, you've been striving, God is calling for us today to lay that down, to lay down our striving, to lay down our trying and to accept His grace and to allow Him to empower us. So if that's spoken to you today, can I just invite you to just uh, put your hands out in front of you just to receive, because I want to pray for you. Because God wants to bring grace. He wants to speak to our hearts. Lord God, I thank you for this word. God, and I thank you for the grace that you give us. I thank you for your empowerment. And God, I pray for every heart that's responding right now. And God, we choose to lay down our striving. God, we choose to lay down our trying. And God, we accept your grace. God, we pursue you. God, we ask that you would pour desire into our hearts. God, to truly know you, to truly understand your heart. God, and I just pray right now that over every individual responding, that you would pour out freedom right now. Freedom from striving and that you would pour out grace and you would pour out strength. Amen. Amen. Well, following Jesus, having it starts with a relationship with Him. 
You know, if you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus, you know, I want to give you an opportunity to do that today, to start a relationship with Him. Because Jesus invites all of us, every single one of us, into a life of purpose, a life of light, and a life of hope. You know, we, we were separated from God because of our sin, because of the wrong things that we have done, and we deserved punishment from Him. But God, in His great love for us, He sent Jesus to earth to live a perfect and sinless life. And then He took our place. You know, the way, what, what we deserved because of our sin was death. But Jesus took our sin. He took our shame. And He died on the cross for our sins. But He didn't stay dead. On the third day, He rose victorious over sin and death, providing us a way to be forgiven, to be restored into relationship with God and to inherit eternal life. And for us to walk in this, the Bible in Romans chapter 10, verse 9 says, If you declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. You know, for us to start relationship with God, for us to be forgiven by Him, you know, it starts with us acknowledging and admitting that we have done wrong by Him and that we need Him. The second is to declare our belief in Him, that we believe in God and we believe in Jesus, and then to invite Jesus into our hearts and into our everyday lives. So if you're here today and you don't know Jesus, you've never made a decision to make Jesus a part of your life, I want to give you an opportunity to pray this prayer with us as the church. It's a prayer of declaration, and of our turning our lives to Him. So we're going to pray this all together. And if you want to pray that for the first time, we invite you to pray this with us. So we'll repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for sending your son Jesus to make a way for me to be in relationship with you. I declare with my mouth that Jesus is Lord. And I believe in my heart that you raised him from the dead. I choose today to follow you. Amen. Amen. We pray that that message was a blessing to you. If you made a decision to follow Jesus, first of all, congratulations. We think that that is incredible. And secondly, if you go to gc.org.au forward slash first steps, our team has put together some resources as well as there's some information there for how you can get in contact with one of our pastors because we'd love to encourage you and connect you into the life of the church.